All right, what is up y'all? My name is Cameron and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. So before we get into it, I got a few things I want to tell y'all. So I want to say a big thank you to each and every one of y'all that has subscribed because we recently hit 8,000 subscribers. So we're getting that much closer to 10K. So once again, thank you to all of y'all that uh, is subscribed to the channel, that hits that like button, leaves a comment down below on every video, watches every video and just supports the channel overall. The second thing I want to show y'all before we get into this video is the rigs I was using because I didn't really go too much in depth on it. So this right here is just a pre-made rig that I picked up. I think I picked this up at Boyd's or at just one of the bait shops around Galveston. It's just really heavy monofilament, big hook down there. You got a slide for your weight and that's way about the top. And this is just the basic rig that we use whenever we go catch bull reds off the beach. It's a good surf fishing rig right here. Now, if you don't want to go buy one, you want to make your own. We also like to use these custom ones right here, just some um, 50 pound mono leader down to a little piece of wire. If you expect there's a lot of sharks in the surf, or you can just go ahead down to another piece of 50 pound. Once again, with a place to slide your swivel. So this leads me into the third thing I want to tell you, which is that I recently started a Patreon page. So if you don't know what that is, that's a place where you can go and you can pay a small amount of money each month. And that gives you access to exclusive content. So on mine, it is, you get a weekly fishing forecast where I go over the wind, the weather, the tide, all that good stuff to hopefully help you out and help you all catch more fish. And then I do an exclusive monthly video. And this month's video is all about catching bull reds. I'm actually working on it right now. I'm going to be showing how to make your own rigs for bull reds in the surf, what baits I like to use, where to target them, when to target them, just all the things that you need to know to catch yourself some big old bull reds this time of year. And then I'm also going to be posting all my recipes really in depth, writing them down, showing you exactly what I use in my recipes, the exact amounts and all the stuff like that for the ingredients. Then everyone on there also gets a discount on merch. You get 25% off all merch. And then another perk of joining the Patreon is that you get on the water live action fishing reports. So whenever I go out and I go fishing, I make a short little video about what is biting, what they're biting on and where they're biting. So all that good stuff. If you want to check that out, I'll have that link down below. I highly encourage you to go take a look at it. It's either one or two dollars a week. That's it. And you get a lot of good content for it, I think. So make sure to check that out and let's go ahead and get right into the video. Alright guys, what is up and welcome back. It is like September 16th today and we're down here on Bolivar trying to do a little bit of bull red fishing at night time. So the first step to catching any fish is to catch bait. Small fish makes big fish, right? So uh, it's a little bit rough. We've had that beautiful water in Galveston for the last two weeks and then it just turned to brown and muddy and crap and the wind picked up. That's okay. Those redfish, they might not love dirty water, but they love rough water and the dirty water, I think they'll be all right. So we're out here, we're gonna try to catch some finger mullet. We didn't come with any bait. We would like to get some blue crabs because that's what I like to use for big reds. But we're gonna try to catch some mullet out here. We have, actually, you can look right here. I wanna shine that over here. We have a whole bunch of finger mullet already. We have one big one. We're gonna try to catch a couple more big ones and I don't know if it's a bunch of bait. Then we're gonna move over to the beach. Maybe we'll try to catch some Kroger whiting, stuff like that. We're just gonna bury it up and see what those reds are eating. See, I'll show you too much of this cast and see if we can get into it. And that's crazy guys. The first uh, three throws we did in here, we probably caught over two dozen. And then it just went dead. I don't know what's going on. They're too smart and too fast, but we're gonna turn the camera off and we'll turn it back on if we catch anything. I mean, it's completely full all the way up to the top with bait. They're probably all dying in there. We're gonna put the big ones on ice like that dude and keep some of the finger mold alive. We're gonna see what happens. All right, y'all. So we are driving down to our spot on the beach right now. We actually already fished a little bit. We drove down towards Crystal Beach a little bit, about five, six miles down Bolivar. And uh, it was pretty rough. So it was rolling six ounce spider weights, which is quite a bit for our little bait that we were throwing. And it is uh, a little choppy, muddy, as we expected. But also it was just a lot of current going from east to west down the beach. So we packed up and we we're heading down the beach now, closer towards the North Jetty. So farther down Bolivar, closer towards the uh, bird sanctuary, if you're familiar with this area. A lot of times down there, the water's a little bit shallower, the guts are not as deep, and the waves are not as big, and there's not a lot, of, not as much current. Now, that may not be true right now, but fingers crossed that's what it's gonna be like. Even though the guts are not as deep there, you can usually still catch quite a bit of fish, especially bull reds, so we're gonna head down there. We're gonna get set up and hopefully be able to get our lines up before dark. It's 7.30, sunset I believe is at 7.30, so it'll be dark by eight. But let's see if we can get set up, get on some fish. We have a high tide at three something in the morning, so it's moving in all night. Y'all stay tuned. Fingers crossed guys, wish us some luck and we're gonna try to get on some big old bull reds during the red run, September 2022. All 
Okay, y'all. We got this thing all red right here. We're gonna go for the relief. Y'all come on. Job and make sure they get a good release. So, walk your fish out here deep enough so you ain't gonna get stuck on a sandbar. There you go, all these parts right. The other sandbar here is not shallow, it's not like ankle deep, so he ain't gonna swim up the deep stuff. So, gonna ride out here. Then we just hold him by the tail and let him revive himself. They'll let you know when they're ready to go. See, he's swimming. Come on. Hold him until they give you a real good kick. That's how you know. That's what it's all about. Catch them, get a good picture with them, release them. Those are your breeders, those are the ones that are making more babies for all y'all. Come out here and enjoy more of them. So good to get those things in the water. No telling how old they were. We didn't hell, we didn't even measure them up next to the rod, but Big fish, let's go out here and get another. Not as young. All right, y'all, another fish right here. So we have these glow sticks on the rods, as you can see. Uh, this rod has already gotten bit like three times since we put it out, okay? And we thought it didn't have any bait left. So we go to dig a hole for our fire and everything. And I'm up there at the truck, and all of a sudden I look back and the glow stick's on the ground. Which, what that means if the glow stick is on the ground is that the rod got smacked super hard. Nathan came over here, it was pulling drag, and he's hooked up. That's two for the night, baby. We thought we were just screwed on gaff top, but apparently not. Go ahead, run though. There he is, he's getting shallow. He's getting on that first bar. Y'all, a lot of times when the fish start getting close, they get up over that bar, they'll start pulling super hard for a minute. So they Yeah, they don't want to come shallow at all. There you go, And the funny thing, y'all, if y'all can even hear me with the wind, I have no idea, but it's only nine o'clock at night right now because it gets dark at like 7.30 now. I think I said that earlier. So in the summertime, it would have just gotten dark 30 minutes ago, but it feels like we've been out here forever, but it's only been an hour and a half maybe. To fish. This fish is still a little ways out here. We saw that light drop, took us about at least 30 seconds to get over here. When Nathan got it, it was ripping. That fish is swimming back and forth on the, on the sandbar. He's right there. You can see him. Oh, he's sweating, guys. He's tired out. There's that fish right there. Rip and drag. Okay, we're walking this fish out past that break. Let him get comfortable, catch their breath. We fought him for a long time. He put up a heck of a fight. So we just want to get him out past here to make sure that he doesn't swim back towards the beach and that he swims out away from it. All right, and what we're gonna do, what we like to do is unclip the fish grips. You just hold them by their tail until they're ready to give a fat push. Where is he? When he, gives a, when he gives a big old push, just give him a shove. That fish is gone. Uh, he got tighter and tighter. Yeah, you literally just have to hold it like that and reel. Oh.
Alright y'all. Joe just caught himself a freaking absolute monster. Bigger than the ones me and Nathan caught by a few inches. We don't know how big ours were, but we know we measured them on the rod around Nathan and we held them up next to him. This one is definitely a couple inches bigger at least. Alright, so it's about two in the morning right now. So far we've caught those three big bull reds. Every single bait we put out has gotten smacked. We missed a couple. We're about to run out our last two baits of the night. Like I said, it's 2 a.m. so we're getting a little tired here, but we're about to wait out and cast our last two baits of the night. High tide is at like 3.30 or something like that. Hopefully we'll get a couple more big fish. The goal for tonight is to catch one more. If not though, we've had a great night. So we're gonna run these baits out and y'all sit tuned and see if we can hook into something massive. Well, that is actually gonna be it for the video. But as y'all can see, we all got onto a nice fish. So it was a super good day on the beach. After that, we ended up casting out a couple more lines. We missed a couple bites and then we just got too lazy to go and get back in that water. It was late in the night or super early morning, I guess you could say. And we just ended up hanging around the fire and then going to bed and then heading home the next morning. So I hope you all enjoyed watching the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're not already. If you are like always guys, thank you so much. Go check out the Patreon too if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. And hey, those reds are still running. They're gonna keep running throughout October, I would imagine. So get out there on the beach, catch you some. Nothing better than catching a big old fish from the beach like that. So that's all I have for y'all now. Until next time, peace.